In the heart of a forgotten land lay Ravenshaw, a kingdom ensnared in the eternal grasp of necromancy. Here, death was not an end but a perverse continuation. The ruling necromancers, cloaked in shadowed robes, sat atop their bone-crafted towers, wielding an ancient and forbidden magic. Their power stemmed from a dark pact with forces unseen, granting them dominion over death itself. The kingdom was a mosaic of despair and dark beauty. Fields were tilled not by the living, but by the resurrected, souls bound to their decayed bodies, working endlessly. In the bustling marketplaces, among the chatter of the living, moved silent figures with hollow gazes, serving without rest. The resurrected, once soldiers, farmers and mothers, now stood guard at city gates and nobles' doors, their wills shackled by the necromancer's spells. Night in Ravenshaw was a spectacle of eerie lights. Luminescent spells weaved through the graveyards, igniting the night with ghostly fires. This was the time of resurrection, where the newly dead were pulled back into a semblance of life. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and ancient incantations as the necromancers conducted their grim rituals, their voices echoing like whispers from beyond. In the heart of this kingdom stood the Grand Mausoleum, a sprawling structure of stone and bone where the elite of necromancers convened. Here they plotted and schemed, their eyes set on expanding their dominion and deepening their understanding of death's secrets. The king, a figure more shadow than man, presided over them. His own life extended far beyond its natural span by the same dark arts. The people of Ravenshaw, the living ones, had grown accustomed to this reality. To them, the presence of the resurrected was as normal as the rising sun. Children played in the streets, weaving between the slow-moving figures of the undead, unafraid and indifferent. The living spoke of death as merely a change of state, a transition into another form of servitude. But beneath this veneer of normalcy, fear festered. Whispers of rebellion occasionally stirred, quickly silenced by the king's ruthless enforcers. The idea of defying the necromancers was as terrifying as it was alluring. To challenge them was to challenge death itself. Yet, change was coming, subtle as the first chill of winter. In the shadows of the graveyards, among the rows of silent tombstones, a lone gravekeeper named Eldin began to notice something unsettling. The resurrected, believed to be void of thought and memory, were showing signs of awareness. Faint glimmers of who they once were started to emerge, like stars in the night sky. Eldin's discovery marked the beginning of an unseen tide, a current that would soon sweep through the kingdom. Ravenshaw, bound in death, was on the cusp of an upheaval that would shake the very foundations of its existence. In this land of necromancy and eternal servitude, the seeds of rebellion were quietly sown, heralding the dawn of a new era, an era where the dead would speak and the living would listen. The moon hung low over the Ravenshaw graveyard, casting long, somber shadows among the ancient tombstones. Eldin, the gravekeeper, moved silently through this domain of the dead, his lantern casting a soft, flickering light. He had walked these paths for years, tending to the graves, a solitary figure amongst the silent company of the resurrected. Tonight, however, the air felt different, charged with a subtle, unspoken tension. As Eldin passed by a row of freshly dug graves, he paused. There was a murmur, a faint whisper that seemed to rise from the earth itself. He knelt, placing his ear close to the ground. The whispers grew clearer. Fragmented words carried on the wind. Names. Please. Memories. Eldin straightened, his heart racing. He had heard rumors. Stories whispered in hushed tones among the living. The resurrected were meant to be empty vessels, yet here they were, murmuring secrets from lives they were not supposed to remember. He wandered deeper into the graveyard, drawn by a sense of purpose he couldn't explain. The lantern's glow fell upon a figure standing motionless by a tombstone. It was a woman, 
her clothes tattered and worn by time, her skin pale and marred. Eldin approached cautiously, his voice barely above a whisper. Can you hear me? The woman turned slowly, her eyes meeting his. There was something in her gaze, a flicker of awareness that should not have been there. Talia, she said, her voice a raspy echo of a life long gone. My name was Thalia. Eldin's breath caught in his throat. This was impossible, yet the evidence stood before him, gazing back with eyes that remembered. Thalia, he repeated, the name feeling strange yet significant on his tongue. She looked around, as if seeing the graveyard for the first time. I had a daughter, she murmured, more to herself than to Eldin. I... I can't remember her face. The gravekeeper listened, his mind racing. The necromancers had always claimed control over the resurrected. But what if they were wrong? What if the dead retained shards of their former selves, trapped within these reanimated shells? Eldin's thoughts were interrupted by the sound of footsteps. He turned to see other resurrected figures emerging from the shadows, drawn to Thalia's presence. They stood in a loose circle, their expressions blank yet somehow expectant. I remember a song. One of the resurrected, a tall man with a scarred face, spoke up. My mother used to sing it to me. Another, a young girl, no older than fifteen, whispered, I had a dog, brown and white. I loved him. The confessions, fragmented and disjointed, wove a tapestry of lost lives and stolen memories. Eldin realized that he was witnessing something extraordinary. These were not the mindless drones the kingdom believed them to be. They were people, trapped in a limbo between life and death. As the night deepened, Eldin made a decision. He would no longer be a mere keeper of graves. He would be a harbinger of truth. These whispers in the graveyard were the first notes of a symphony of rebellion. It was time for the dead to have their voices heard. Time for the living to listen. With a newfound resolve, Eldin extinguished his lantern. In the darkness, surrounded by the resurrected, he whispered a vow. I will help you. Together, we will break the chains that bind you. In the opulent halls of the necromancer's court, a grand masquerade was underway. The elite of Ravenshaw, both living and undead, mingled under the flickering candlelight, their laughter echoing off the stone walls. Among them moved Lucas, a resurrected spy, his presence unnoticed, his true purpose hidden beneath a mask of servitude. Lucas had been resurrected recently, his body still retaining the semblance of life. He blended seamlessly among the courtiers, his appearance that of a loyal attendant. But beneath the surface he harboured a mind awakened to its past and a heart burning with the desire for freedom. His eyes, sharp and observant, scanned the room. He eavesdropped on conversations, gathering snippets of information, troop movements, supply routes, the necromancer's plans. Each piece was a thread in the larger tapestry of the kingdom's power structure. As the night wore on, Lucas made his way toward the inner chambers, where the necromancers discussed their dark arts away from prying ears. He slipped inside, unnoticed, a shadow among shadows. The chamber was a stark contrast to the revelry outside. Here the air was thick with the scent of ancient tomes and potent elixirs. The necromancers, their faces obscured by hoods, spoke in hushed tones about their latest experiments on the resurrected, their voices laced with excitement and cruelty. Lucas listened intently, his heart pounding in his chest. They spoke of a new spell, one that promised to strengthen their control over the resurrected. But there was a problem. It required a rare ingredient, found only in the deepest part of the Ravenshaw Forest. Armed with this crucial information, Lucas retreated from the chamber as quietly as he had entered. He navigated through the dark corridors, his mind racing with the implications of what he had heard. The new spell could spell disaster for the budding rebellion. He emerged into the cool night air, the sounds of the masquerade a distant echo behind him. 
Lucas knew he had to act quickly. He made his way through the city's winding streets, the moon guiding his path. As he reached the outskirts of the city, where the graveyards lay, he found Eldin waiting for him, his expression anxious. Lucas relayed everything he had heard, the gravekeeper's face growing graver with each word. This changes everything, Eldin said, his voice low. We must act before they complete this spell. It could be our only chance. Lucas nodded in agreement. I'll return to the court. There might be more to uncover. Eldin placed a hand on Lucas's shoulder. Be careful, he cautioned. The court is a nest of vipers. Lucas offered a faint, wry smile. In a kingdom of the dead, even vipers can be outwitted. With that, he vanished into the night, a phantom driven by a cause greater than himself. In the shadows and secrets of Ravenshaw, a rebellion was taking shape, its foundations laid by the unlikeliest of allies, a gravekeeper and a resurrected spy. Together, they would light the fire of revolution, a blaze that would consume the old order and give birth to a new dawn. The sky was still a canvas of stars when the rebels, a motley crew of the living and resurrected, assembled at the outskirts of Ravenshaw. Eldin, their leader, stood at the forefront, his eyes fixed on the city walls that loomed in the distance. Beside him stood Thalia, her presence a symbol of the Resurrected's awakening, and Lucas, the spy whose information had brought them to this decisive moment. Their target was the Eastern Gate, the least guarded yet strategically vital for their plan. Eldin's gaze swept over his makeshift army, a mix of grim determination and burning resolve reflected in their eyes. Today we fight not just for our freedom, but for the soul of Ravenshaw. Eldin addressed them, his voice steady and clear. We strike at dawn, swift and silent as the night itself. The first light of dawn had just begun to colour the horizon when they moved. The rebels advanced, their footsteps muffled, their weapons ready. Lucas led a group of resurrected, their movements precise, a stark contrast to the sluggishness that once defined them. As they neared the gate, the guards, unsuspecting and few, barely had time to react. The clash was brief but intense. Swords clanged against armour and spells crackled through the air. The resurrected, empowered by their newfound will, fought with a ferocity that startled their opponents. Thalia, wielding a sword with an eerie grace, cut down a guard who lunged at her. Her eyes, once empty, now burned with a fierce light. Beside her, a young resurrected man, no more than a boy in life, used his shackles as weapons, striking down another guard with relentless fury. Eldin, at the centre of the skirmish, fought with a determination fueled by years of silent resentment. Each swing of his blade was a strike against the tyranny that had plagued their land. The guards, overwhelmed and unprepared, quickly fell. The rebels secured the gate, opening it to allow the rest of their forces entry. Eldin looked back at the city, its towers silhouetted against the rising sun. This was just the beginning. As the sun rose higher, painting the sky in hues of gold and crimson, the first battle of their rebellion ended. Ravenshaw's eastern gate, a symbol of the necromancer's power, was now in the hands of those they had oppressed. The rebels gathered, breathing heavily, their faces marked with both triumph and the grim reality of their struggle. Eldin addressed them once more, his voice ringing with conviction. This gate is our first victory, but our fight is far from over. Today we have shown that the resurrected are not mere puppets that the living can defy their oppressors. We stand united, the living and the resurrected, and together we will reclaim our freedom. The group erupted in a chorus of cheers, their spirits lifted by the victory. But even as they celebrated, Eldin knew this was just the first step in a long and perilous journey. The necromancers would retaliate and the kingdom would be plunged into chaos. Yet in that moment, as the dawn broke over Ravenshaw, there was hope. Hope that the chains of servitude could be broken, that the whispers in the graveyard could become roars of freedom. The rebellion had begun, and there was no turning back. 
The victory at the Eastern Gate sent ripples through Ravenshaw. While it ignited hope among the oppressed, it also provoked a swift and brutal response from the necromancers. They tightened their grip on the city, increasing patrols and fortifying key locations. Amidst this turmoil, word reached Eldin of a dire situation. Several rebels, including key resurrected allies, had been captured and were imprisoned in the notorious Ravenshaw dungeons. Eldin knew a rescue was imperative. The dungeons were infamous for their harsh conditions and the cruel fate that awaited prisoners. In the dead of night, he gathered a small, skilled group for the mission, including Thalia and Lucas. They moved under the cover of darkness, their path lit only by the faint glow of the stars. The dungeons lay beneath the city, a labyrinth of stone and iron. Eldin led his team through secret passages known only to a few, a testament to his years of navigating the city's hidden corners. They moved with precision, avoiding the increased patrols with a mix of stealth and swift action. As they descended into the dungeon's depths, the air grew colder, the silence more oppressive. The only sounds were the distant echoes of their footsteps and the occasional clank of chains. Eldin felt a chill that had little to do with the cold. The weight of countless sorrows seemed to permeate these walls. They reached the cells where the rebels were held. The sight that met them was harrowing. Men and women, both living and resurrected, chained and battered. But their eyes still held a flicker of defiance. Eldin quickly set to work, picking the locks with a skill born of necessity. The rescue, however, did not go unnoticed. The clatter of armor and shouts of guards echoed down the corridors. They were discovered. Talia and Lucas took defensive positions as Eldin hurried to free the last of the prisoners. A fierce battle erupted in the dungeon corridors. The confined space made the fight chaotic and brutal. Thalia, her sword a blur, protected Eldin's back as he worked. Lucas, using his intimate knowledge of the necromancer's tactics, countered their spells with cunning and precision. Despite being outnumbered, the rebels fought with a desperation and determination that stemmed from their cause. Each freed prisoner joined the fray, their chains becoming weapons against their captors. The battle reached its peak as the last lock clicked open. Eldin shouted, To the surface! Move! The rebels surged forward, a wave of ragged, indomitable spirits fighting their way toward freedom. They emerged from the dungeons just as dawn broke, the first light of day casting long shadows across their escape. The city was waking, unaware of the battle that had raged beneath its streets. As they retreated into the safety of the hidden pathways, Eldin took a moment to look at his companions, their faces weary but alive with the fire of victory. They had faced the darkness of the dungeons and emerged stronger. The rescue from the dungeons had emboldened the rebellion, sparking a fervor among the people of Ravenshaw. Whispers of the Gravekeeper and his band of living and resurrected fighters spread like wildfire, igniting a flame of resistance across the kingdom. With their numbers swelling and their resolve hardened, Eldin knew the time had come for a bold move, the siege of the capital. As night fell over Ravenshaw, the rebels, a diverse amalgam of the living and the resurrected, gathered at the edge of the forest that bordered the capital. Eldin stood before them, his figure etched against the backdrop of the moonlit woods. Beside him, Thalia and Lucas, now key figures in the rebellion, awaited his signal. The capital is the heart of the necromancer's power. Eldin addressed the gathered crowd, his voice firm and resolute. Tonight we strike at that heart. We fight not just for ourselves, but for all of Ravenshaw, for those who have suffered under this tyranny. Remember, we are not just fighting against something. We are fighting for something. The rebels moved under the cover of darkness, a silent army advancing towards the looming walls of the capital. Their approach was masked by the thick shadows of the forest, their movements a whisper against the night. As they neared the city, the first obstacle confronted them, the outer defences. The walls were heavily guarded, lit by torches that cast a flickering glow. 
Lucas, using his inside knowledge, guided a group of resurrected to disable the Watchtowers silently, their actions swift and deadly. Meanwhile, Eldin and Thalia led another group to breach the main gate, using a combination of brute force and cunning. The gate fell with a thunderous crash, signaling the beginning of the siege. The rebels surged forward, pouring into the city. The clash was immediate and intense, the sound of steel and spellcraft filling the air. The necromancer's guards, caught off guard by the ferocity and suddenness of the attack, scrambled to mount a defence. Eldin fought at the forefront, his blade a dance of death in the moonlight. Thalia, with her swordsmanship, was a whirlwind of vengeance, each strike a tribute to her stolen life. The resurrected, free from the necromancer's control, fought with a passion that belied their undead nature, their every action a defiance of the fate imposed upon them. The streets of the capital became a battlefield, the shadows playing host to a war for freedom. The rebels pushed forward, determined to reach the heart of the city, where the necromancer's stronghold stood. As dawn approached, the tide of battle turned in favour of the rebels. The guards, overwhelmed by the relentless assault, began to retreat, their morale shattered. The necromancers, realising the gravity of the situation, unleashed their dark magic, casting spells of death and despair. But the rebels were undeterred. They had come too far, sacrificed too much to falter now. With a final, determined push, they reached the stronghold, the epicenter of the necromancer's power. The sun rose over a city transformed. The once impenetrable capital of Ravenshaw was now in the hands of the rebels. The siege, a bold and desperate gamble, had paid off. The fall of the capital marked a turning point in the rebellion, but the final and most crucial battle still lay ahead. In the heart of the city stood the Citadel of Shadows, a towering fortress where the lead necromancer and his closest adepts resided. It was here that Eldin and his allies would face their greatest challenge. The streets of the capital, still echoing with the remnants of the night's battle, were eerily quiet as Eldin, Thalia, Lucas and their band of warriors made their way towards the citadel. The fortress loomed before them, its dark spires piercing the sky, an ominous symbol of the necromancer's reign. As they approached, the air grew colder, the atmosphere heavier. Eldin felt it clawing at his resolve, but he pushed forward, his purpose clear in his mind. The gates of the citadel burst open and a host of undead guards poured out, led by the necromancers. A fierce battle erupted at the foot of the fortress, the clashing of steel and the crackling of arcane energies filling the air. Eldin fought his way through the horde, his eyes set on the main spire where the lead necromancer awaited. Thalia was at his side, her blade singing a deadly song, while Lucas countered spell after spell with his own newfound mastery of the arcane. The ground shook as powerful necromantic spells were unleashed, tearing through the ranks of the rebels. Eldin witnessed the fall of many of his comrades, their sacrifices fueling his determination. Finally, Eldin and his companions breached the citadel, fighting their way through its dark corridors towards the throne room. The lead necromancer, a figure robed in shadows, awaited them, his power palpable in the air. You are fools to challenge the Eternal Order, the necromancer hissed, his voice a cold whisper that seemed to come from everywhere. Eldin stepped forward, his blade ready. Your order is built on suffering and oppression. Today, it ends. The final duel was a clash of ideals, as much as it was a battle of swords and magic. Eldin and the necromancer engaged in a fierce combat, the gravekeeper's every strike fueled by the cries of the oppressed, every parry a defiance of death's dominion. Thalia and Lucas battled the necromancer's adepts, their own struggles mirroring the larger conflict. Around them, the citadel seemed to shudder, as if the very stones were reacting to the tumultuous release of magical energies. In the end, it was Eldin who landed the decisive blow, his sword piercing the necromancer's heart. 
As the dark figure fell, a shockwave of energy rippled through the citadel, the stronghold of necromancy beginning to crumble. The rebels quickly evacuated, the fortress collapsing behind them, a symbol of the necromancer's shattered power. As they emerged into the light of day, the city lay before them, freed from the shadow that had oppressed it for so long. But the victory was bittersweet. The cost had been high, with many lives lost in the struggle for freedom. Eldin, Thalia, and Lucas stood amidst their weary companions, their hearts heavy with the sacrifices made, yet hopeful for the future. The final stand at the Citadel of Shadows marked the end of the necromancer's reign in Ravenshaw. But as Eldin looked upon the faces of his allies, both living and resurrected, he knew their fight was not just about defeating a tyrant. It was about building a new world, a world where all could live and rest in peace. In the aftermath of the rebellion's victory, Ravenshaw found itself at a crossroads. The fall of the necromancers had left a power vacuum, and the kingdom was in a state of flux. It was during this pivotal time that Eldin, along with Talia, Lucas, and other key figures of the rebellion, called for a gathering that would come to be known as the Council of the Free. The council convened in the heart of the liberated capital, amidst the ruins of the Citadel of Shadows, now serving as a poignant reminder of their hard-won freedom. The participants were a diverse assembly. The living who had fought against the necromancer's tyranny, and the resurrected who had broken free from their enslavement. Eldin opened the council, his voice echoing amidst the remnants of the citadel. We stand here today, not as separate beings, divided by life or death, but as Ravenshorans united in our desire for a free and just kingdom. Our journey forward begins now, with what we decide here together. Thalia, representing the resurrected, spoke next. Her voice, once a faint whisper in the graveyard, now carried the strength and conviction of all those who had been silenced. We, the resurrected, have been granted a second chance at existence. We seek not to return to the lives we once had, but to live in peace as equals among the living. The council deliberated over the course of several days, addressing the myriad issues that faced the kingdom. They discussed governance, justice, and the integration of the resurrected into society. Lucas, with his knowledge of the inner workings of the necromancer's court, provided valuable insights, ensuring that the dark arts would never again take hold in Ravenshaw. One of the most heated debates revolved around the fate of the necromancers who had surrendered. Some called for retribution, while others advocated for mercy and rehabilitation. Eldin, ever the voice of reason, argued for a path that would prevent the cycle of vengeance and hatred from continuing. Our fight was against tyranny and oppression, not individuals. We must judge them by their actions moving forward, not just by the past. The Council also faced the challenge of rebuilding the kingdom, both physically and spiritually. The scars of the necromancer's rule ran deep, and healing them would take time and effort from all. As the Council drew to a close, a framework for a new Ravenshaw began to take shape. A provisional government was established, with representatives from both the living and the resurrected. Plans were laid for elections, a concept once foreign in a land ruled by fear and magic. Thalia, in a poignant moment, addressed the council. Some of us, the resurrected, choose now to pass on, our purpose fulfilled. Others will stay to build this new world alongside the living. But we all leave behind a legacy of resilience and hope. The Council of the Free concluded with a sense of cautious optimism. Ravenshaw was entering uncharted territory, a land where the living and the resurrected would coexist as equals. The path ahead was fraught with challenges, but for the first time in a long time, the future seemed bright. Eldin stood amidst the departing council members, his heart heavy yet hopeful. The rebellion had been about tearing down the old order. Now, the real work would begin, building something new in its place. The newfound peace in Ravenshaw, though hard won, was fragile. As the kingdom embarked on its journey of reconstruction and healing, 
external forces began to stir, sensing an opportunity in Ravenshaw's vulnerability. The most imminent threat emerged from a neighboring realm, the Kingdom of Harrowvale, long envious of Ravenshaw's riches and now intrigued by its weakened state. Word of Harrowvale's mobilization reached Eldin through a network of spies Lucas had established. The rival kingdom was amassing troops at the border, their intentions clear and ominous. Eldin convened an emergency meeting with the provisional government and key military leaders, both living and resurrected. The peace we have fought so hard to achieve is under threat, Eldin stated gravely, addressing the assembled leaders. Harrowvale sees an opportunity in our moment of transition. We must show them that Ravenshaw, though recovering, is not defenseless. The Council was a flurry of activity as strategies were discussed. Thalia, representing the Resurrected, pledged their support. We stand with Ravenshaw in gratitude and solidarity. We will defend this land that has given us a second chance at existence. Lucas, with his expertise in strategy, proposed a plan. We should fortify our border defences and send emissaries to Harrowvale. They must understand that any aggression will be met with unified resistance. The decision was made to bolster Ravenshaw's defences while seeking a diplomatic resolution. Eldin personally oversaw the fortification of the border, ensuring that the defences were manned by a mix of living and resurrected soldiers, a symbol of Ravenshaw's unity. Meanwhile, emissaries were dispatched to Harrowvale, carrying a message of peace, but also a warning. The talks, however, proved challenging. Harrowvale's ruler, King Aldric, was ambitious and saw Ravenshaw's state as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to expand his own kingdom's influence. As tensions escalated, incidents at the border began to occur. Skirmishes broke out between patrols, each side accusing the other of provocation. The situation was rapidly deteriorating towards open conflict. Back in Ravenshaw, the public sentiment was a mix of fear and defiance. The memories of the recent rebellion were still fresh, and the prospect of another war loomed heavily over the people. Eldin worked tirelessly to maintain morale, reminding them of the strength they had shown in overthrowing the necromancers. Let us not falter in the face of this new challenge, Eldin addressed his people. We have shown the world our strength and our resolve. We will stand united as we did against the darkness, and face this threat together. As Ravenshaw braced for a potential war, the ripples of their past struggles continued to shape their present. The kingdom, reborn from the ashes of tyranny, now faced the test of defending its freedom against external aggression. The escalating tensions with Harrowvale cast a dark shadow over Ravenshaw, a kingdom still in the throes of rebuilding. The threat of invasion loomed like a storm on the horizon, and the Ravenshawrans, both living and resurrected, prepared to defend their hard-won freedom. Eldin, now seen as the de facto leader of Ravenshaw, faced the daunting task of rallying a kingdom still healing from the scars of its recent past. He convened a war council, bringing together the best military minds, including those of the resurrected who had proved their mettle in the rebellion. The storm gathers, and we must be ready to weather it, Eldin declared, addressing the council. Harrowvale underestimates our resolve. We have faced darkness before and emerged stronger. We will do so again. Lucas, leveraging his spy network, brought crucial intelligence. Harrowvale's forces are formidable, but they lack our unity and purpose. Their soldiers are motivated by conquest, not conviction. Thalia, representing the Resurrected, added, We who have been given a second chance at life will stand in defense of this kingdom that has become our sanctuary. Our resolve is unbreakable. The Council laid out a strategy. Ravenshaw would not wait passively for Harrowvale's attack. Instead, they would take proactive measures, strengthening their defenses and conducting strategic strikes to disrupt Harrowvale's supply lines and communication. As part of their preparations, Eldin reached out to potential allies among neighboring kingdoms, seeking support and solidifying alliances. The message was clear. 
an attack on Ravenshaw would have broader consequences, potentially destabilizing the region. Meanwhile, in the capital and across the kingdom, the people of Ravenshaw rallied. Training drills were conducted and the city walls were reinforced. The resurrected integrated into the army, trained alongside their living counterparts, a unified force standing against a common enemy. Thalia took charge of training the resurrected, turning their unique abilities to their advantage. They practiced unconventional warfare, using their resilience and knowledge of the necromancer's tactics to outmaneuver and outwit potential invaders. Lucas focused on intelligence gathering, ensuring that Ravenshaw stayed one step ahead of Harrowvale's movements. His spies infiltrated enemy camps, relaying information that proved invaluable in fortifying Ravenshaw's defences. Amidst the preparations, Eldin addressed the people of Ravenshaw in a rousing speech. Our kingdom has been through darkness, but each time we have emerged stronger, more united. Let us stand together once more as one people against those who seek to oppress us. We are Ravenshaw, and we will not be conquered. As the days passed, the sense of impending conflict grew stronger. The tension between Ravenshaw and Harrowvale had escalated to a breaking point. The once quiet borderlands were now alive with the sounds of marching armies and clanging metal. Eldin, standing at the forefront of Ravenshaw's forces, surveyed the scene with a mixture of determination and concern. The time for diplomacy had passed. The battle lines were drawn. Ravenshaw's army, a blend of the living and the resurrected, stood ready, their faces set in grim resolve. The resurrected, under Thalia's guidance, had become an integral part of the force, their unique abilities honed for the conflict ahead. Lucas, with his network of spies, had provided crucial intelligence on Harrowvale's movements, giving Ravenshaw a strategic advantage. As the Harrowvale army approached, their banners fluttering in the wind, Eldin addressed his troops. Today, we stand not just for Ravenshaw, but for the ideals we fought so hard to uphold. Remember, we fight for our freedom, for our right to live and exist in peace. Stand strong, stand together. The battle commenced with the thunderous roar of armies clashing. Harrowvale's forces, driven by King Aldric's ambition, charged with ferocity, but they met an Ravenshoran wall of steel and resolve. Thalia led a contingent of resurrected warriors, their movements eerily silent amidst the cacophony of battle. They struck at key points, disrupting Harrowvale's formations and sowing confusion in their ranks. Lucas, meanwhile, commanded a group of archers, their arrows raining down on the enemy with deadly precision. His strategic acumen turned the tide in several critical moments, countering Harrowvale's attempts to outflank the Ravenshoran lines. The battle raged throughout the day, the borderlands echoing with the clash of swords and the cries of the fallen. Eldin fought tirelessly, his presence on the battlefield inspiring his troops to push back against the seemingly endless waves of Harrowvale's soldiers. As night began to fall, the tide of battle shifted. A clever maneuver orchestrated by Lucas led to the capture of a key Harrowvale commander, causing disarray among the enemy ranks. Seizing the opportunity, Eldin ordered a decisive charge, leading his forces with a rallying cry that pierced the chaos of the battlefield. The Harrowvale army, now leaderless and demoralized, began to falter. Ravenshaw's forces pressed their advantage, driving the invaders back with renewed vigor. The resurrected, tireless in their efforts, became the vanguard of the push, their eerie resilience demoralizing to the enemy. Finally, as the moon rose high in the sky, the Harrowvale forces retreated, their invasion thwarted. The borderlands, scarred by the day's conflict, stood as a testament to Ravenshaw's determination and unity. In the aftermath of the battle, Eldin walked among his troops, offering words of comfort and gratitude. The cost had been high, but they had defended their homeland against overwhelming odds. In the wake of their successful defense against Harrowvale, a new sense of pride and unity surged through Ravenshaw. However, the kingdom remained on high alert, 
Aware that the battle was only a part of a larger war, Eldin, ever vigilant, continued to fortify Ravenshaw's defences, preparing for any further aggression from Harrowvale. Unexpectedly, a turn of events began to unfold that would alter the course of the conflict. Lucas, utilising his spy network, brought surprising intelligence to Eldin. A faction within Harrowvale, disillusioned with King Aldric's warmongering, sought to initiate peace talks with Ravenshaw. This group, led by a high-ranking Harrowvale general, believed that continued conflict would only lead to mutual destruction. Eldin, recognising an opportunity to end the bloodshed, agreed to a secret meeting with the Harrowvale faction. Under the cover of night, in a neutral location near the border, Eldin met with General Rowan of Harrowvale. The general, a seasoned warrior with a stern demeanour, expressed his desire for peace. We have seen enough death, Rowan stated, his voice tinged with fatigue. Many of us in Harrowvale do not wish for this senseless war. We seek a truce, a chance for our kingdoms to coexist in peace. Eldin, understanding the gravity of the moment, nodded in agreement. Ravenshaw has no desire for further bloodshed. We are open to a truce and willing to work towards lasting peace. The meeting marked the beginning of secret negotiations between the Ravenshoran representatives and the Harrowvale faction. Meanwhile, the public face of the war continued, with both kingdoms maintaining their defences. As the talks progressed, a plan was formed to overthrow King Aldric, who remained the primary obstacle to peace. The Harrowvale faction, with support from key military figures, would lead a coup to depose the warmongering king paving the way for a new government more amenable to peace. The coup, swift and decisive, was executed with precision. King Aldric was captured, and a new provisional government, led by General Rowan and other reformists, took control of Harrowvale. The news of the coup and the subsequent establishment of a peace-seeking government in Harrowvale spread rapidly, changing the political landscape overnight. In Ravenshaw, the news was received with cautious optimism. Eldin addressed his people, emphasising the importance of this new development. This change in Harrowvale presents us with an opportunity to forge a lasting peace. We must extend our hand in friendship and work towards a future where our kingdoms can coexist in harmony. The tide of change brought by the coup led to formal peace talks between Ravenshaw and the new Harrowvale government. The discussions facilitated by Eldin and General Rowan, focused on establishing a treaty that would ensure mutual respect and cooperation between the two kingdoms. As the treaty was finalised, a sense of relief and hope swept through Ravenshaw. The streets of the capital, once filled with the sounds of preparation for war, now echoed with celebrations. Ravenshaw had not only defended its freedom against external aggression, but had also played a pivotal role in ushering in a new era of peace in the region. With the treaty signed and peace established between Ravenshaw and the new government of Harrowvale, a sense of renewal swept across the lands. The once imminent shadow of war had lifted, giving way to a new era of cooperation and hope. In Ravenshaw, the reconstruction efforts gained new momentum, bolstered by the prospect of lasting peace. The capital, which had braced for siege and destruction, now buzzed with activity, its people working together to rebuild what had been lost in the tumultuous years of tyranny and conflict. Eldin, hailed as a hero and a unifier, worked tirelessly to ensure that the new peace would be a lasting one. He collaborated closely with General Rowan, now a key ally, to establish trade and cultural exchanges between Ravenshaw and Harrowvale, fostering goodwill and understanding between the two kingdoms. Thalia, representing the Resurrected, took on the role of an ambassador, travelling to Harrowvale and other neighbouring realms to share the story of Ravenshaw's rebirth and the role of the Resurrected in its society. Her eloquence and grace won many hearts and minds, helping to dispel the myths and fears surrounding the Resurrected. Lucas, once a spy, now served as the head of intelligence for Ravenshaw, ensuring that the kingdom would never again be caught off guard by internal or external threats. 
His network of informants and allies extended across borders, a web of eyes and ears keeping watch over the peace Ravenshaw had fought so hard to achieve. In a symbolic gesture of the new era, a grand council was convened in Ravenshaw, attended by delegates from Harrowvale and other neighbouring kingdoms. The council celebrated the establishment of the Treaty of Unity, a document that not only formalised the peace between Ravenshaw and Harrowvale, but also laid the foundation for a regional alliance promoting stability and cooperation. During the council, Eldin addressed the assembly. Today marks not just the dawn of a new era for Ravenshaw and Harrowvale, but for our entire region. We have shown that even from the depths of darkness and despair, a new light can emerge. Let this be a testament to what can be achieved when we choose unity over division, peace over conflict. The council concluded with a grand celebration, the streets of Ravenshaw filled with music, dancing and festivities. As night fell on the day of the council, Eldin stood on the balcony of the rebuilt citadel, looking out over the city. The lights below twinkled like stars, a mirror of the sky above. He thought of the journey that had brought them here, of the sacrifices made and the lives changed forever. Ravenshaw had faced the darkness of necromancy, the chaos of rebellion, and the threat of war, emerging each time stronger and more united. Now, with a new dawn breaking, the kingdom looked towards a future filled with promise and potential. It was a future that Eldin had fought for, a future that he believed in, and a future where Ravenshaw would thrive.